Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're gonna to be testing out the Himaway Escape moped style e-bike. Now I'm very excited to test this out. I've been wanting to try a moped style bike out for a while. In today's video, we're gonna be testing all the things that I normally test when I test e-bikes. We're gonna be testing out the speed of the bike. We're gonna be testing out the power of the bike up hills. And we're just gonna see how it performs overall on a pretty decent ride. So do you guys know how this bike performs if you were considering purchasing one? Now, Himaway did send me this bike for testing and review, but as you guys know, We'll be putting it through real world testing and see how it does. Now, a few things I want to mention before we get into it is if you've seen my live stream I did on the unboxing and assembly of this bike, that would show you guys basically what is involved in the assembly. I did run into one problem after once I went over all the nuts and bolts of the bike and made sure everything was good and that was with the handlebars. When I assembled the handlebars, I went in the manual and it said right around 18 Newton meters of torque. When I set my torque wrench and I was using a torque wrench guys, I went to tighten this one up and it pulled the threads right out of here. So not sure if those torque values are correct, but just be cautious guys. Make sure you do torque them to the right amount but don't overdo it. The only thing I did to fix that was I had a longer bolt because the threads actually went back further than what the factory bolts uh, come at. So it, it didn't strip the hole out all the way deep. So I just put a longer bolt in there and then I was fine. So that was the, basically the only issue I had with assembling that. Now this front rack is an additional accessory. It's about $90 for that. And you can get a rear delivery basket cargo basket type thing that comes back further and it's a lot bigger that's around 90 dollars as well i do not have that when i put my rock bros bag on here to go for this ride today the rack that comes on the bike is a little bit wide so i couldn't put this strap underneath it on my rock bros bag i would have to make an extension for that it was a little difficult to get these through here i'd use a little pick to get the straps out to attach them so the bag don't slide off the bike and it does hang off the back of the rack about two and a half inches or so and there's no supports here if i wanted to flip down these panniers on the sides to use those there's really no support there for these to rest up again so just keep that in mind guys if you're planning on using a rock bros bag or something like that on this bike you may not be able to use the flip down panniers uh, you might be, still be able to, but it might flop in and hit the tire. And the only other thing that I see should have been maybe designed just slightly different on this bike is the front headlight. And when I put this rack on here on the front that's meant for this bike and installed the headlight, when you hit a bump and the suspension compresses too much, the headlight does hit the fender. So they should have designed that maybe a little bit differently or made this bracket a little bit shorter so it sets up a little bit higher or it comes out and up more or something. Maybe I assembled that wrong. Maybe I need to spin this bracket around so that it gets the light out further. If that does help, I will put down below in the description of this video or in the, or in the comments if it helped or not. Another thing I wanna let you guys know that I noticed is that previous shipments of this bike, I've seen videos that they came with hydraulic disc brakes. However, as of me receiving this bike, in December of 2021, it has mechanical disc brakes on it. I don't know why they went to mechanical from hydraulic, maybe to cut the cost, maybe because the parts were limited. If you look at some of the pictures on their website, as of me making this video, it still shows the hydraulic brakes, but they do state on there that it comes with mechanical disc brakes now. So like I said, not sure if that's something that they changed recently, but it would have been really nice if they would have kept the hydraulic disc brakes. Now, with that being said, up here on the handlebars, they do have a integrated belt on the brake levers here and the brake levers are nice with a rubberized inlay on them for grip on the brakes and they do use a set of Tektro Aries brakes with 180 millimeter rotors on both the front and the rear of the bike. The hand grips are ergonomic but they're just like a hard faux leather hand grip. Uh, very nice and big though gives you a really nice hold on the handlebars. You have your control pad next to that for controlling your PAS levels, the headlight button for turning on your headlight, info button for different readings on the display, and you can hold the down button down for a walk mode that will help you if you are walking the bike up a hill. As soon as you release that, it uh, basically disables that. In the center here, you have a display and you could toggle through your different PAS levels from one to five, which that is programmable in the settings. And then you can also display your trip, your ride time, odometer, max speed, average speed, battery levels up top on the left-hand side. And underneath that, when you're riding the bike, you'll see a power meter going up and down to show you how much power your bike's using, but it doesn't tell you the wattage. That would have been nice if they would have told you the wattage 
output of the motor, but it's just a basic power meter. Over here on the right, we have a half grip twist throttle, which I really like on my e-bikes. And then we have the Shimano seven speed shifter, which leads down to the 14 to 28 Shimano freewheel in the back, coming up to the 46 tooth chain ring in the front. Now on the front chain ring, there is only a double-sided chain guard. There's nothing on the inside to keep that chain from popping off on the inside. However, they do give you the guard on the outside to keep your pants clean and things like that. It has a nice big set of aluminum Welgo pedals and a Shimano Altus derailleur. So that's a nice step up above entry level and it does provide a derailleur guard there as well. Now, one cool thing about the front of the bike is I really like the BMX style handlebars on this bike. That really gives it a really nice look. And I like the adjustability of them to be able to angle them back or forward for getting them closer or farther away from you for taller riders. Now, the wiring management up front is a little bit, I don't want to say sloppy, but I feel like they should have maybe included a nice sleeve over some of these wires. Now, I do have some wrap that I'm going to wrap around there. And it was only a few dollars on Amazon, so I'll leave a link down below to that if you guys are interested in picking up some of that. It will just give it a much nicer look there on the front. Other than up on the front by the handlebars, the rest of the wiring looks really good. It's all integrated into the frame coming down here, nothing exposed. And you really don't notice any of the wires or cables other than just coming down here off the handlebars. Now, one of the best things that I like about this e-bike or e-moped, whatever you want to call it, is that it has dual suspension. It has front and rear suspension. Now, the rear suspension on this bike is probably part of the reason why it's around 92 pounds for the weight of the bike with the battery. Now, this is like a motorcycle suspension on the back. I actually had a dirt bike as a kid that had the same type of suspension. And you can adjust the suspension on the bottom by turning this ring up and down. It does come set the softest from the factory. Now it is still a little bit stiff, not super soft, but it definitely is a lot better than a hardtail bike. And it does take a lot of the bumps out of those jarring bumps and potholes and things like that. Now the seat height is not adjustable. It comes factory at about 32 and a half to 33 inches off the ground up. You can see I measured it in my unboxing video. I really, really like the comfort of this bike with me being about 5'8". It fits me really well. When I sit on the bike, I touch the ground really good. I feel like I got good leg extension when I'm pedaling the bike. It may not be perfect leg extension, but for an e-bike, I never really found an issue with having my seat too low because the motor does help you out and things like that. But if you are a taller rider and you do like to get that exact leg extension that you're supposed to when you're riding a bike, just keep in mind that you cannot adjust the seat up and down, so it is what it is. Like I said, with me being about 5'8", I found it really comfortable to ride, and you'll see that here on my ride test when we test the bike out. For power, this bike's using a 14 amp hour Samsung or LG battery. That's what they state on their website. It's integrated really nicely into the frame there. Really sleek design. It has the charge port on the right-hand side here with a nice rubber grommet to enclose that. And then you do have your key over here for locking the battery in and out of the bike, you can unlock it, disengage the battery latch there and pull the battery right out. Now that key does not turn the bike on or off. You do not have to have the key in to run the bike, but you do have to have the key to put the battery in or to take the battery out. Now that battery is using a 22 amp controller. That's, those specs are what's on the website. I didn't take it out to confirm but it's powering a 750 watt hub motor in the rear. And I really like the style of these mag rims on this bike. You don't have to worry about spokes coming loose and having to tighten them up over time. So I really do like the style and look of those. They do probably add a little bit to the weight of the bike, but I really like the way this bike looks with those mag rims. The kickstand on this bike is in the center of the bike. It is adjustable. One thing to know is that the cranks do hit the kickstand if you were rolling the bike backwards. So keep that in mind. And they probably put that kickstand in the middle for weight distribution because this is a little bit of a heavier bike. And up here on the front suspension, on the left-hand side, you have a preload adjuster. And on the right-hand side, you do have a hydraulic adjustment there, positive and negative with different clicks for different adjustability. And it does have a hydraulic lockout, which is really nice definitely better than a cheap suspension. All right guys, so enough of me talking. Let's get into it and see how this bike performs. Now I'm gonna reset the trip meter so we can see how accurate it is. To do that, you turn the bike on, hold the positive and negative button down. That'll take you into some of the basic display settings. And then when it says TC, 
you want to change that to Y for TC yes and then hold down the I button to get back out of there and now you can see the trip is cleared set at zero all right guys the first thing we're going to try out is the top speed of the bike in pedal assist 5 then we're going to go in and try to adjust the settings before we go on a ride and show you the pas levels of all the other settings 20 21 so right out of the box guys about 21 miles per hour now let's try just throttle All right, let me get let me get on a straight stretch guys so about the same with throttle 21 miles per hour out of the box top speed so now let's stop and i'll show you guys some of the settings that you can change and we'll try to get a higher top speed out of this bike all right guys so the first setting you could change hold the plus and negative button down It'll go into your trip clear menu. Then you hold the negative and the I button at the same time. And that will go into your general parameters. So actually it'll go into a password first. Now they don't give you this password in the manual and guys do this at your own risk. Legally, a class two e-bike is 20 miles per hour. So just keep that in mind. If you do this, you're not gonna wanna ride it in a lot of areas, uh, it's illegal. So make sure you guys keep that in mind when you do unlock your bike to a higher speed and just use it for off-road. To unlock it, you basically type in the password 0510. And then that will unlock your wheel size. I'm not going to mess with that. And LS is your speed limit. So factor out of the box, it's set for 36. We're going to go ahead and crank that all the way up to 45. And then we're going to see if, I believe that's the only two settings that you could change in this menu. So we're going to hold the I button down to get back out of there. And just for good measure, we're gonna turn the bike off and turn it back on. And I also wanna see if the trip stays when you do that. So yeah, the trip meter does stay. We're gonna try the speed out now and see if it got any faster. All right, here we go, guys. Pedal assist five. ghost pedal guys because I basically ran out of tension on the cranks I was spinning too fast so about 25 miles per hour I would say there so 25 miles per hour just by unlocking it in the uh, settings there to what was it 45 I think I it was what it was so let's see what the throttle will do now Three, twenty-four, so I'll say around 24 to 25 miles per hour. All right, guys, so 24 to 25 miles per hour throttle only on level ground. Now, there are some other settings you can go in and change. I'll show you that here now, and we'll see if that makes any difference. All right, guys, so the other setting you could change, you hold the positive and negative down. That shows you your trip clear. If you hold the positive and negative down again, now instead of the negative and the I button, that will take you into another P6 setting where you have to input that password again. You want to input 0510 again, and that, that takes you into a lot of different levels. VOL is your voltage. Now, SCA is what you want to go into. That is going to be your pedal assist level so zero to five you could go in there and adjust each level one through five to whatever you want one will be at 38 percent two set at 49 three is at 59 four is at 67 five i did change five to 99 that's the max you can go that's the only one i changed was five but you could change this instead of having just five levels of assist you could change this to nine levels of assist if you want zero to nine or you could change it to only have three levels of assist, you can go zero to three. So you have different options there. If you want 
uh, only three different levels. If you want nine different levels, seven different levels, whatever you guys want, I'm gonna probably leave mine set on five, but let's try it out on nine just to see. And you can see there are ones at 25, so they are a little different. Let's see what nine is. Nine is at 96. So let's change that to 100 or 99 and see if that makes any difference. All right, so now you guys can see I have nine different levels of assist, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we're gonna try nine now and see how fast the spike is. And I'm just gonna ghost pedal, guys. 25. So I'm gonna say it's about the same, 25 miles per hour, even if you're on nine levels of assist. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that back down to five. But like I said, guys, you can go in and change each one of those levels to whatever you want percentage wise, and it will make your bike faster, make it slower in those levels, which is really nice if you're a newer rider and you want to tone those levels down or for somebody that, that's not really familiar with the power of these bikes, you can go ahead and tone those levels down and make it a little bit more safe for them. So now let's go test this bike out on some hills and see what kind of power it has. And then when we're on our longer ride test, we're gonna test out those different levels and see what speeds each level is. But like I said, I'm not gonna to get too into detail of each one of those speeds because you can go in the menu there and change them to whatever you want. All right, guys, so the first thing we're gonna to try to do is go up this pretty steep hill here. I'm gonna be pedaling in gear one, and this is a little bit mushy because it rained pretty good last night. Pretty, so pretty nice to have these four inch fat tires for that. It is mushy down here at the bottom, you can hear it but I'm gonna to try to see if this bike will take me up this hill. I do have to put a little bit of effort in, but it did take me up no problem for being a 90, 90 to 92 pound bike. Oh no, I got the bike all muddy. That's all right, at least the fenders worked. My bag's not muddy and it's uh, not too bad up here, so. Fenders work pretty good, guys. It does include the front and rear fender as well. I think I forgot to mention that earlier. They are a set of plastic fenders, but they are mounted really well. They don't vibrate or anything, so pretty nice fenders, guys. Now let's go try it out on a hill with just throttle only. All right, guys, as you know, in all my tests, I do this hill in throttle only just to see how it does. Now I am in pedal assist one because I wanna show you guys that you do have full throttle no matter what pedal assist level you're in. Okay, it's pulling me up pretty decent. Not pedaling at all, so not too bad, guys. Definitely, definitely at least 750 watts for sure. Not sure the exact output on this bike or what it peaks at. So this pulled me up no problem. Some of my 500 watt bikes don't make it up this without pedaling or it feels like it's gonna overwork the motor, but this didn't have a problem. A little bit slow at the top, but pulled me up. All right, guys, so there's the basics. Let's take this thing out on a couple mile ride and just see how it performs overall so you guys know what to expect on an everyday average ride up and down some hills and a few things like that. All right guys, so right there is about where I feel comfortable pedaling with the cadence. And it doesn't feel like I'm running out of pedal. That's about 15 miles per hour. Anything faster than about right here, about 19 to 20 miles per hour, it's gonna feel like you're pedaling way too fast. So that would have been nice to see them use a little bit different gearing in the back. Because anything faster than 20 miles per hour, you're just gonna wanna ghost pedal and act like you're pedaling because it's gonna be hard to keep up with the pressure on the pedals at that speed at around 25 miles per hour, which is what we're doing right now. So you can just ghost pedal if you want. But for many people buying this style bike, they're not gonna buy, be buying the bike to be pedaling it a whole lot anyway. But with that being said, me being 5'8", it seems pretty comfortable for me to pedal. Even though these aren't hydraulic brakes anymore, they do seem pretty good. Those Tektra Aries brakes are pretty nice. There's no squeaks or, well, there's a little squeak there. May still need adjustment, but pretty good stopping power still, guys.
Now I did turn down pedal assist one, which is what I'm on right now. I did turn that down a little bit because when I'm riding slower in town or on a bike trail and stuff, I want to go slow. So I turned it down to 25% and that gets me right about six miles per hour, seven miles per hour. And I believe I set two at around 35%. And that's gonna be right around 10 miles per hour or so. But like I said, you can go in and change those, so I'm not gonna to focus too much on that. I guess this bike's not going to be a speed demon up hills, but it do does have some pretty decent power. And we'll show that here on a little bit of a longer hill once we get down into town. Now I programmed my PAS level three to about 50% and that gets me around 15 miles per hour, which is where I feel really comfortable pedaling. You can see the speed of the pedals isn't too fast for the gearing. Like I said before, anything above about 18 or so, it's going to feel like you're pedaling too fast. But most people are just gonna use throttle only and ride the bike like a moped anyway. You can see there, or here at least, that the front light hits the fender of the way. I had to stop and switch GoPro batteries. My uh, battery died. When I stopped, I noticed that I lost the little piece the trim piece that goes on the front fender. So hopefully I can find that later on. That's the second time that popped off when I hit bumps. Uh, I, it should be glued on. If I find it, I'll probably just glue it on so it doesn't come back off. But as you can see there, the light, the way I have it mounted, was hitting the front fender when the front suspension compresses. So if I do find a way to remount that to where it doesn't hit, I'll update you guys down below in the comments or the description of this video. Let's get back to it. Whew. All right, guys, so I just went back through the GoPro footage and realized where I lost that front piece, so I'm going to try to find it. Good thing I had the GoPro mounted on the front and was recording to see exactly where it fell off, but it fell off somewhere down here when I took it off-road real quick, so I'm going to go ahead and look for that, guys, and hope I find it. Aha! So I found it, and it's still in one piece, so I'll be definitely putting this in my bag and then gluing it back on so it never falls off again. And I forgot to mention when I was talking about the bike in the beginning, this front light, when I put it on here, it's a really nice heavy duty light. However, it did look like the front glass on this was a little bit kind of foggy on the back side. So almost like if there's a film on there or something, not sure why it was like that, but I uh, can't wait to test that light out when it gets dark. Now the rear light is a brake light. However, it's not super bright. There's only one LED right in the center. And when you pull the brake lever, it flashes. It doesn't get brighter, but it does flash. So that is better than nothing as a brake light, but it would have been nice to see a little bit of a brighter light and one that got brighter whenever you pulled the brake lever. Suspension's pretty good, guys. No problems at all with the suspension. Even the rear, a little springy, but pretty good. Other than that front light hitting, pretty soft, pretty comfortable, especially with this big seat. I guess now we're gonna go up this hill here. This is one of the steepest hills in my town. I am in first gear. This is just throttle only. It's not too steep yet, but it does get steeper further up here. But we're gonna see how it pulls me up this hill. 
Now earlier, my power said I was down to two bars when I was riding, putting a load on it. Now it's back up to about four. But let's try this hill out and see how it does. Now I did have to just stop and make some adjustments because my uh, derailleur was not going into first gear. It was in shifting. I didn't notice it at first. So when I tried that hill test out on that grassy hill, I was probably in second gear, not first. But now I definitely have a lot better mechanical advantage here now that it's going into first. It was just a quick adjustment of the derailleur, no big deal. Most of the time I have to adjust those on my bikes and it's pulling me right up this hill, no problem. This is after a 10 mile trip here today. About nine, well, nine and, nine and a quarter miles almost so far today. So after 9.2 miles on the battery, it still pulled me up that no problem. We do have one more really long hill to go up before I get back to my house. So I'll see you guys when we get to that one. All right guys, so we're approaching the last hill before my house, the last long hill. I'm down to two battery bars here. So let's see how this does going up this hill. I'm gonna start out in seventh gear and shift down as I need to as I feel like I need to put more power of my own into it. So there's seventh gear. Pulled me up pretty good, no problem. Not putting a whole lot of effort in. I am gonna downshift a little bit here. Not that I really need to yet, but I feel like I just wanna help it a little bit more to conserve a little bit of battery power and just to put a little less strain on it. So not too bad, guys. Not a speed demon, 10 miles per hour. And I can feel it in my legs a little bit here, guys. Let's just do a little bit of throttle. Help it out a little bit here. And I'm in fourth gear, guys, so I could go down into first and give it a lot more of a mechanical advantage if I needed to. If it was a lot steeper, steeper of a hill, but I don't feel like I need to help it that much. So down to one battery bar now, guys. I am 10.55 miles into this ride from a full battery. So a lot of fast speed riding, a lot of hills. So I did put a pretty good, uh, pretty good hurting on this battery charge, I guess you could say to give it a good fair test. Um, on level ground, you'll get a lot more miles out of this battery. All right guys, one other feature I wanted to show you is there is a USB port underneath the display for charging. I'm gonna put the battery back in it and show you guys what kind of output that has. There is a port right underneath the display here. And looks like the bike does have to be on for the for the power to work. Right, guys, so it is charging at 4.3 to 4.8 volts, which is just over 0.5 amps and about two and a half watts. So it's not gonna charge your phone super fast at two and a half watts of charging. That's actually pretty slow, but at least it will keep some charge in your phone when you're out on those long trips. And when I got back from my ride, I tested my battery with a voltmeter and it was right about 47 volts. So I still had a pretty good amount of juice left in the battery. I would say it was at about 40%. So even though I only got about 11 miles or 12 miles on that ride, I still had a few more miles left to go for sure. I would expect somewhere, if I would have continued out on the ride today, with this battery, I probably would have got somewhere between 15 to 20 miles, depending on how much more hills and the terrain that I rode on. I'm gonna have to cycle the battery a few times, charge it up a few times to get it conditioned, and then maybe in the future, in the springtime, I'll be doing a range test with this bike to actually see how many miles I get out of it. So make sure you guys stick around. Overall, guys, I mean, this bike does definitely have 750 watts of power, at least 25 miles per hour max speed. I really like the way that uh, I fit on this bike at being five foot eight. Other than they uh, don't include hydraulic disc brakes anymore and that front light being a little foggy and hitting the front fender when I hit bumps. Like I said, that might be my fault there. Maybe I have to install it differently. And this is the hill where we first started with just throttle. So let's see if we can make it up and now with just throttle. Now that we're only on one bar because battery level is gonna matter. Yeah, I feel like I need to help it, guys. That's just because the battery's getting down, but 
just a little bit of help here still one-handed no problem but overall guys really enjoying the bike really comfortable love the rear suspension in the bike like the motorcycle style shocks i love the moped style look of it but that's just me i hope you guys found this video interesting and a uh, little bit more knowledgeable on how the bike works and what to expect if you were to purchase this like i said that's with me riding it at 165 pounds you guys might be different depending on your rider weight but i hope you guys found it enjoyable make sure you guys stick around for the next one and check out the links down below for both the bike and any of the accessories that i used on my bike like the bags uh, and cell phone holder and things like that and i will see you guys around on the next video don't forget to check out my instagram please leave a thumbs up and definitely definitely leave a comment down below guys it really helps my channel out as well as the watch time so i appreciate all of you and i will see you guys around on the next one thanks for watching everyone